East Park elections are not easy. And they are not going to be any easy in the future. Uh, in terms of costs, I know members ask, uh, how much does it cost you? Well, I have no figures, but I know it costed me three months, eight hours working. So I lost, my office lost those working hours. So I want to thank my partners for allowing me to, to be away from office. I think if it was not for them, I could not have reached this far. I want to thank all of you members for standing and having faith in me. I stood up amidst a strong challenge from the ladies. I want to congratulate them. <clears throat> uh, you have given us very strong ladies. Uh, I want to pledge that we shall work together as a team. Council Chair-elect, I want to assure you that uh, we shall work hand in hand. Our interest is very full. We made a lot of pledges. I've started to realize that some of the pledges may be difficult to realize. <laughs> At this point in time, I want to request you to remind, to put us in prayers every day. <laughs> and I'm very honest and serious about it. That uh, I have had a couple, I have had a conversation with the chairman, chair-elect, and I've, I've expressed my fears <laughs> that uh, we we have to work. We have. We have no reason and we have no excuse. I don't remember, I can't foresee me standing in front of you in the next three years. I don't know on what platform I will stand and what I'll be telling you if I will not achieve at least 70% of what I promised. <laughs> With humility, I want to say thank you very much and may God bless all of you abundantly. Thank you very much. You know, the, the problem with politicians <laughs> is they don't know when to stop campaigning. <laughs> we said one minute. Can we try with Dr. Kalunda? Good afternoon, all. Yeah, I will try to keep to the one minute. So let me start by thanking the council. I thank the past and present and outgoing members of the council, the FCAs and the CPAs. Why I'm thanking them especially, because that now covers the whole fraternity of the profession, is uh, because of your belief in me and my agenda, I'm standing here before you. As I give my thanks, let me not forget to thank my family. In fact, for most of you who are with us in Mombasa, I would actually especially thank my husband, who is uh, not an accountant, but a genetist, who was there in the field, on the ground. He became friends of the accountants, and he really appreciated this profession. Thank you to him on behalf of all the members. I also want to thank uh, the team. Uh, I was uh, running under this, uh, the slogan or the tag name, Sleek. Thank you so much, the Sleek team. You really encouraged me, you supported me, and it is on the premise of the slick agenda that I will work and endeavor to fulfill what we agreed in that agenda. I would also want to thank all the candidates who presented themselves. In fact, as FCP Mokwa has said, this campaign period actually took us off from our families, from our normal jobs, and uh, we created a small family within ourselves. Any time things were becoming hard, we'd call each other. In fact, I would say we became consultants among ourselves. As much as we were running for the same position, we became one very strong family, and I hope and pray that that friendship will continue. Uh, finally, uh, I would say that uh, there are so many lessons that we learned along the way. And one of the lessons that I learned during this period, which will be very dear to me and remain to me for a long time, is uh, I came to appreciate more and more 
the way the accountants value this profession, the passion in which they were sharing issues relating to the profession. So thank you so much, CPAs. Let us be proud of this profession. As much as there are issues that are not so good, the new council, together with your support, we hope that will make the institute much better than the way we found it. And uh, just one thing, which is going to be my parting shot. Huh? Let me say this to myself. I, CPA, Dr. Elizabeth Kalunda, I should acknowledge that today signals the beginning of the real work ahead. So I pray that uh, you may pray for us, you may pray for us as the council, so that we may achieve what we promised to achieve. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was one minute, eh? <laughs> CPO Leek. Council members, FCPAs in the house, the secretariat, my fellow accountants, good afternoon. I stand before you today with lots of gratitude and humility just to say thank you so, so much for believing in me and for giving me this chance to serve you in our great institute. As you've had lots of sharing from my colleagues, the campaigns weren't easy, but you believed in us. You've given us a chance, and our work is cut out. So it's my humble prayer that you support us and encourage us to deliver. I still believe in my agenda. I stood on the bold agenda. I'm confident that I'm going to deliver on that, and I'm sure we will work together to ensure that we make our institute greater. I'd like to thank all those who supported me through this journey. Of course, I start by thanking God Almighty. As we usually say, he has a purpose. And I to believe his reason for giving me the, this opportunity today is to serve you. Kama kuna mambo ingine tutajua mbeleni. But for now, I want to believe the reason I am here is to serve the members. So thank you so much to the Almighty. Um, I would also like to thank the strategic team that worked with me, that believed in the bold agenda and owned it they've actually delivered this victory. I say a big thank you to them. To my family, you've heard from my colleagues, we literally detached ourselves from our families to run these campaigns. It wasn't easy. A big thank you to them too. And last but not least, to you all for believing in us, for voting for me. I really appreciate. I want us to continue engaging, moving forward now to ensure that we deliver on the agenda. Let's infuse our ideas, what I have, what my colleagues had, and other great ideas that will come up along the way. And lastly, to the membership, and I mean to my predecessors, I'd like to say thank you so much for the work that you put in to ensure that ISPAC is where it is today. You've done so much, and even as we take over the mantle, we are trusting God that we'll also be able to do a lot to ensure that we move ISPAC to the next level. Asante sana, God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Let's clap for the three again. And allow me to invite the outgoing council members. One and a half minutes. Starting with the CPO body. Let's clap for him. So thank you very much, uh, Chairman. I also want to take the opportunity to appreciate uh, the, our chair, the council members you've served with, uh, all the fellows, the past chairman, past council members. It's been a great pleasure. And I say that uh, my journey to come to become a council member the dream began around uh, 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, I feel very proud that I've given this institution eight years, two years as a, a member of committees and six years as a council member. It's not uh, one of those very easy things to do, especially when I joined council. In the Kenyan culture, I was below the age of the youth, and therefore it was more difficult. Now I live actually having matured, having learned more 
and also having crossed that age of youth. So there are many things I'm taking away from this particular gathering. I've served in many committees and I feel very, very proud, especially the committee I feel proud about is the research and development because we are the ones who began it, set up the policies and began uh, this journey of research and we hope that the dreams we had around the research will be realized as time goes. And of course, I can't forget that as we were coming, I, I felt what they were saying with various mottos. Uh, when I was younger, my motto used to be never say die. <laughs> this is because when I ran for council the first time I failed, so I said, you know, I will not give up. And therefore, I kept running until I got to council. And of course, over time, it kept improving. So it became beyond the horizon, meaning that we are thinking very, very far it kept improving. Now my last one was the high five. I completely changed the day I joined uh, the council. Because you come with uh, your vision, you come and realize there's something called an institution. And therefore you have to fit in the institution and you cannot try to run the institution according to your limited vision. That's why you have a variety of people so that everybody can contribute to the vision and therefore you build a bigger uh, institution. It's been basically amazing, I must confess. I actually go away very, very happily. And of course, knowing that I still remain an accountant, and therefore, I'll be coming here in my capacity as an accountant, a CPA of this particular institution. And we say that uh, finally, for the ones whom we didn't meet their expectation, we say Paul Esana, and we take responsibility for that. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Can you do high five to your neighbor? High five. Yes. Tell, tell your neighbor that is for CPO Bari. <laughs> Thank you. Serving the institute for eight years is no mean task. I want to invite the vice chair to talk to the members. Thank you, ISPAC National Chairman, FCP Julius Mwatu, past chairman present, FCP Michael Owero. FCP Ross Ogega, FCP Michael Itote, FCP Steve Lugalia. Not sure if another chairman came in that I have not seen. Council members, present, past, and future. Members of the College of Fellows of the Institute, my fellow accountants. We gather today for the 41st time in our history to celebrate our progress and to commit to our future. In life, we are all part of a story, a story whose beginning preceded our time and a story whose end we'll never see. Our role in that story is to write our chapters and live our lives in our time to advance our greater enduring course. It has been the privilege of my professional life to serve as a member of the Council of the Institute for the past two years and to serve as a National Vice Chairman for the past one year. I am filled with gratitude to you all for the opportunity to make a contribution and write my story in our common story of progress, whatever the adversity. I recognize and salute all those who came to these roles before me, for because of your service and sacrifice, my work has been made easier and made more progressive. I especially thank those who served alongside me in all the times, including those who've since left, like FCP Pius Ndwati, FCP June Kivinda, and those that I leave behind for the common purpose we pursued. The height we scaled together we have written our story and left our imprints in the sands of time. I particularly congratulate and wish very well those who now take the mantle to serve our institutional profession into the future. You have our prayers and full support as to steer this common ship into the timeless journey that we are all part of. In my service for the Institute over the years, particularly in the Council over the last two years, and in my run for chairmanship this year, there have been many models many mentors, many friends, many supporters, and many goodwill uh, holders who I cannot all thank from this podium at this time. The campaigns that we ran this year itself will be remembered for a long time, not just because of electrifi electrifying the membership, but because it has brought our profession some light. Through it, we have increased interest and awareness of our profession. We have go achieved the highest voter turnout in this park elections history. Indeed, we have brought back the young people's interest in ISPAC and accountancy profession. This AGM itself, that has the highest attendance so far in our history, is itself partly 
because of the electrifying elections that we did. When we fight so fiercely, it's just because we love this profession so deeply, and it's because of our common purpose for these elections. Let me thank my family, who've borne the absence of my service, my parents and my sisters for their unconditional love, my employer Safaricom Limited and my colleagues in Safaricom, not just for the time to serve the Institute over the many years and the whole long period of campaign, but for every support they give, including the personal financial contributions of my colleagues in Safaricom to support what is definitely, as you've heard, an expensive campaign. I also support, I also thank very much my council's colleagues for trusting me, not just to work with them together, but even for honoring me by electing me the vice chairman in that service. And to probably the most electrifying campaign team in our HISPAC history, I thank you. To the campaign director, CP Brian Moy, who did this campaign as a science more than an art, we'll always remember you. To the co-chairs of my campaign team, CP Dedan Mugi and CP Abraham Kiptum, and for the many people that you led together across the country, the army that believed that it was time to accomplish the mission. And to you, many of you who believed. As you've seen, this was a close contest. It was a close election. Indeed, it's actually a fairly balanced election. But in a democracy, the ultimate sovereignty belongs to we, the people. And in a professional contest, it's an election of fairly qualified people to determine who one of them sits on the seat at a particular time. This election was no different. Indeed, I think it was only different to the extent that it brought even those who've had no interest in our elections before or those who had given up for a long time to come back to vote. And to that extent, I think it was a fairly well-contested election. We've completed the election process, and now we have winners. I congratulate my friend C.P. Rose Maura on a declaration as our chairman and wish her extremely well as she starts a journey, as we start a journey as our fifth decade as an institution. I also congratulate those who've just been brought up to the table, FCP Mokua, CP Dr. Kalunda, and CP Riz Paulik on the election to the council. I salute all those who offer themselves to serve. You all embody the spirit of service. Our institute and our profession now marches ahead with a clear belief that our best days are yet to come, and no doubt that we'll make many setbacks in the future, but we must always remember that just like the days of the past, we shall and will always make progress. From me to you, there's never goodbye. It's always a see you next time. Until then, God bless you and hear you every time you pray. And pray with me always that God bless the profession that we love and the country we call home. Thank you. Thank you. Let's clap for the vice chair again. And now, finally, I'm the last on exit. <laughs> and I want to thank God for making it possible for me to serve this prestigious profession. I want to thank ISPAC for the 14 years ISPAC has given me and given me an opportunity to serve. I started serving ISPAC as a trainer and I always give this story and it's a true story. In this accounting profession, I rose up the ranks and I was working with Ernest and Young until I became a supervisor. And because I grew up as a shy boy and I thought accountancy is where I belong because I thought an accountant just sits on a corner, never says anything to anybody and makes a lot of money at the end of the year. And because I'm a shy boy, I thought that is where I belong. Until I became a supervisor and things started falling apart. And that's the time my mentor then, CPA Gitai Gashai, I think he's the current CEO of Ernest and Young, was my mentor. He was an assistant manager then. 
and he told me, Julius, you now need to take this one head on. And that's the time I started training. I started training at Ernest and Young, new joiners. Then that went out to East Park. And as I did training for East Park, specializing on tax, that is my area of specialization. And by the way, that is what partly earned me the FCPA, because in that passion, in 2010, I trained for East Park the 14 tax seminars out of 14 for that year. There were no many experts in tax, and I was then called by the then CEO, FCPA, Caroline Keegan, and he told me we can actually consider you for a fellowship. So I did two years training. I started, I joined the tax committee for another two years, and later on, I joined the council which I was then to serve for eight years. Training was four years. I done training for four years, two years in the tax committee, and later on, um, eight years in the council, serving the council as a council member for four years, two years as vice chairman, and two years as the chairman. And the reason I want to thank the institute and the members for giving me the opportunity is what was happening the last few days. And did you know that I almost became the Commissioner General? <laughs> when the Gazette notice was being posted on WhatsApp, I was trying to turn to see if there is some writing on the other side. <laughs> but I'm saying that, ladies and gentlemen, because I think his pack gave me more than I gave it. It is because of his pack that I found myself there. And forever, I will appreciate what his pack has done for me. I want to thank my family. We call ourselves the Tata J, and the J is by design. My wife, Janet, my son, Job, and my two daughters, Joy and Jasmine. And if there's going to be others, <laughs> you can guess for yourself. I want to thank the council. You actually don't realize how much you need the council until you become the chairman. I really want to thank the council. We have served together. I want to thank the secretariat, led by the CEO, my friend. It's not easy. And that is why I was telling the new council members that up here is warmer, but it also gets very hot. Ladies and gentlemen, when I came to you and I wanted to be your chairman for two years, I really needed this job. I needed it. And because for you to win these elections, sometimes you need a swag. I came to members and my, my swag then was 24 key priorities in 24 months, working 24 hours a day. And that is work actually delivered. I always tell people that I believe that accountability is personal. For those who interacted with my manifesto, I came up with the 24 key priorities. Those are real. And I was telling myself in the 24 months, I need to do just one. The 24 hours are done. The 24 months are done. I think the question you need to ask is, are the 24 priorities done? And I can tell you, before the end of today, if you have not received an email from ISPAC, you'll be receiving one soon. I documented exactly what I told members 
uh, you do. And I meant sure as the chairman, because the chairman carries the vision and drives the strategy, as your chairman for two years, I'll do exactly what I promised members. And it is something we can go through all of us. And uh, FCP Moku alluded to it. And because I'm a fixed asset in council, when I sought election my first time, I came up with a manifesto. When I reviewed the manifesto three years down the line, I realized the things I told members were not possible. So I sat down and I said, I cannot do a balanced co-card. What I'm going to do is a contribution statement. And you know, because you have been a council member for three years, you can claim everything. <laughs> so you sit down and you say, this is what I have done at that point. Ladies and gentlemen, because I've shared detailed layout of the 24 key priorities, and in the interest of time, I'm just going to mention one or two. The 24 key priorities, ladies and gentlemen, were based on five pillars, enhanced member services, hand focusy and CPA brand recognition, strengthening the regulatory framework, support to branches and the devolution agenda, and institutional sustainability. For me, on the member services, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest achievement was that definition of an accountant, that expanded definition of who an accountant is. And I'm not going to go back to that because I think in my council report, I gave some uh, details on that amendment. The KYM, know you are a member, that exercise which Again, we did to profile our members. It was very good. And I can tell you today, we are more focused. If you look at my contribution statement, which you will get on your emails, you see exactly what that KYM has done. For opportunities, I think the MOU we signed with the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority, and we subsequently certified 26 of SMPs to do unclaimed assets audits. That's a big one. And I know some of the SMPs are actually already doing that. We end a similar MOU with the Office of the Auditor General. And the Auditor General, working together with our technical team, were able to classify audit firms into five. And based on those classifications, Again, we certified over 30 audit firms to do public sector audits. Most of them were SMPs. And subsequently, the firms, some of the firms were given some jobs by the Auditor General. On the youth, I think I talked about TAPEF and the internships, the 36%. And I want to encourage members in fact, one of the things which ISPAC did for me was to help me discover myself. Because we used to go to the universities and do mentorship to students as ISPAC, then we walk out. Then one day, I, I decided that I'm going to do something different as a person. And in the last two years, I've picked up 26 students, 26 university students, who I mentor personally, and I think that is giving me a lot of satisfaction. On the practitioners, ladies and gentlemen, you talked about the farm management guide, which is a startup kit for the young accountants, new practitioners, the audit software, which we talked about, and I think we cannot overemphasize that. The fees guidelines, the fees guidelines, ladies and gentlemen, and this came after the amendments to the Accountants Act. Those fees guidelines already have been exposed to members, and I think the deadline was closed. So the committee in charge will be looking at what members say, 
Then the next step will be to take those proposals to the CS National Treasury, and I believe that's going to be a success story for all of us. Last year, the council approved the limited liability partnerships, and again, this is aligning our practitioners with the trends, global trends, and I think now, if you want to practice, you can choose either to practice as an individual, as a partnership, a limited partnership, or just a partnership. You decide, and I think it's a big opportunity. On advocacy and visibility, ladies and gentlemen, we have signed a number of mutual recognition agreements. In the last two years, as your chairman, we signed an MRA with SICA. We signed an MRA with SICA in September 2017. And I'm happy to report that nine members of ISPAC have been recognized by SICA. And what that means, <coughs> what that means is as a CPAK, you can walk to South Africa and you'll be recognized as a chartered accountant of South Africa. And I think that's big for us. In the same two years, we established a new chapter in Australia. And members, it's good to know that out of the 23, 24,000 accountants, members of ISPAC, we have our members in 41 countries. When we did the KYM, we realized that we have our members in 41 countries. And I think it makes sense for us to continue serving members wherever they are. We established the Australian chapter in August 2017. And I'm happy to say that last month, after a lot of negotiations, and I want to appreciate the support from CASNEB, CPA Australia approved a mutual recognition agreement between ISPAC and themselves. So I guess the next council will be proceeding with the sign-offs, and I believe this is for the benefit of especially our young members. Australia is a big market. You can try it. The legislative agenda, I think I don't want to go back to that, but one big discussion we are having, we paid a courtesy visit to our member, FCP Oparanya, who also doubles as the chair of Council of Governors. And we are working together to review the, the Public Finance Management Act, PFM Act. If you talk to FCP Oparanya, because he seems to, to, to be a moving PFM Act, he tells you that the PFM Act we are using is a plea devolution law. There are a lot of gaps and he's holding our hand. We are signing an MOU with him on behalf of Council of Governors and that discussion which we have always had with our members being sent home every time a new governor comes in, I think is one of the things we want to entrench in the, in the MOU and reach out to all the counties so that in future our members are not mistreated. In 2018, ladies and gentlemen, we, the council approved what we are calling an expanded media engagement framework. You agree with me that for many years, media appearances were restricted to the chairman and the CEO. Today, if there is a matter on the public discourse, you may not necessarily see the chairman of LSK. But you see a lawyer, you see our Kili. And that's a brand. So we discussed with the council and agreed that let's open up, of course, with some controls. Let have our senior members also go to the media. Let's have all the branch chairmen go to the media. And I think in the last one year, you have seen a lot of that. On stakeholder engagements, I think again, in my speech, in my uh, council report, I talked about that. 
The last one which I would want to just highlight is the one with on the office of the Auditor General. When our members of parliament came up and said we don't have competent auditors to audit the office of the Auditor General, and I'm happy to say that we immediately uh, engaged them. We first of all went to the media and made some noise. Then that formed the basis for the doors getting opened. And we went there, and I'm happy to say that the last report I got, that um, the National Assembly has been able to identify four practitioners who they are considering for the audit of the Auditor General. Amendments to the Accountants Act, again, a big one. I don't want to repeat that. I want to refer you to page 72 of the annual report, page 72 of the annual report. There is a very detailed analysis of what changed and what it means for you. On devolution, ladies and gentlemen, all the nine physical branch offices are now open. So today we can look back and see that journey which was started by FCPA Patrick Mutange, who was my chairman in 2011, and that is the job he gave me because we joined council in 2011. I think we can look back and say we are somewhere. And I'm telling you today, the CPA brand is felt, is being felt at every county. I've engaged almost half of the governors in the last two years because I think advocacy was key for me. I want to tell members of ISPAC, I end a dream and I put it as one of my key priorities and I said that other than opening the physical branch offices, I want to plant a seed. I wanted to plant a seed for each branch so that a percentage of the revenues earned at each branch can be retained by that branch for purposes of putting together a CPA center in the future. As we walked into that dream, the dream grew and actually became a reality because as I stand here today, ladies and gentlemen, 10 governors have actually promised to grant us land as his park. You can clap. And I think that is one of the shoes I'm going to pass to the next chairman. If we have done 10, I think you can do the other 37. But the strategy we have been using, because these are politicians, we were not going to ask for help from these ladies and gentlemen. We, we have gone there with a battle card in the name of assisting the SMEs. And that has worked. We started with the governor of Laikipia, Governor Delito. And Governor Delito has given us 70 SMEs. And I want to say that because we have SMPs here. We have SMPs here. There's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of opportunities. Governor Delito is working with our 70 accountants, mapped to seven SMPs. Professor Kifuda Makueni has accepted to do the same. Mandago was in Gishu, has accepted to do the same. Sang Nandi has accepted to do the same. Sam Tunai Narok, the same. The governor of Garissa and the governor of Kericho. And the governor of Nyandarua, Francis Kememia. So the opportunities are there and I believe it's something which the council can take forward. My key priority number 24, the last one, was to put together a center for public finance and tax. Just to fill in that gap which seems to exist because today we don't know who regulates the public finance professional. Today we don't know who regulates the tax professional. The Center for Public Finance and Tax was put up last year, and the Nangro board was installed, and I think we have begun to do <coughs> the baby steps. As I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to thank 
my vice chair, CP and Denise Osondo, and Denise, I will remember Denise, for giving me the punchline. Every time we do a press briefing, I will call him and tell him, give me the last palanglav. <laughs> and he was very good at that. Let's clap for him. <laughs> Other than that, CP and Danish has been guiding us for the last two years on risk management and governance issues. Allow me to thank CP Eros Maura. CP and Danish was, is, my, is my vice chair. My, actually, let me say my second vice chair. CP Eros Maura was my first vice chair. And I don't know whether it is the auditor in her. But she will always ask at the end, but why? Just when you are about to make a decision, she will ask you, but why? Then you realize there's something you would have dropped. Other than that, CP Rose Maura has guided the 22nd Council on Practitioners and Gender and the Devolution and Gender. Let's clap for CP Rose Maura. CP Obare Nyaega, we call him the governance champion. He is also the CEO of ICS, the Institute of Certified Secretaries of Kenya, and is usually very instrumental on matters and governance. CP Nyaega, as you are aware, is now the convener of finance and strategy, and he also convenes the research committee. CP Susan Oyatsi, Let's clap for CPA Obari Nyaga. <laughs> CPA Susan Oyatsi, and I want to thank CPA Susan for the public sector perspective. CPA Susan is the champion of whistleblowing and member protection. And I want to request CPA Susan, please don't leave this council before you actually actualize that dream and you have one year. Let's clap for CPA Susan. <laughs> CPA Samuel Alala, this gentleman, no wonder he is the convener of member services, but other than that, and even before he became the convener, this is the gentleman who has been pushing council on members' welfare. Members' welfare. Let's clap for CPA Alala. <laughs> I want to appreciate Damara Skimosop. She is not with us here. Damara Skimosop. And Damara is, is a nature acts expert, and she has been very instrumental on nature issues. And other than that, Damara has also been our chairman of council welfare. It is not easy to be in council. So we realize that we need a welfare at council level, and Damara is, is the chairman of that. She organizes and disorganizes and reorganizes the accountants in council because the less of us are accountants. FCP Shamia is also not with us here. We call him the regulator. He is the man who will tell you that on regulatory issues, we are not going to compromise. CP and Geoffrey Malombe and CP and Geoffrey Malombe plays to the book. For him, it's about the law, the policy, and the procedure. And he'll also a few times remind you that we are the government. And we have learned to appreciate the government in council. CP Nicholas Latin, who is not with us here, he's actually one month old. And I think I can only tell him, Karibu is per council. CP Anu Angeshi, again, who is not with us here, we usually say, she is the voice of reason. I want to appreciate FCP of Pius Duarte, who served with me for those many years until December last year. And one good thing about FCP and Duarte is he'll make even the hardest things look very easy. He will tell you, Chairman, he is easy. And you are burning. And uh, he has really, really held us. I think uh, you know 
some of us joined Kanzo with a very hot blunt, maybe some temper sometimes. FCPA will just walk to you and tell you, ah, my channel are you. <laughs> and that's it. And finally, CPA, June Kip Vinda, who served with me again for three years. And this is the only council member, by the way, who came up with a manifesto for three years. She delivered what she promised members, and she walked out. I don't know how she did it. <laughs> but she walked out. We will remember her specifically for mainstreaming our members who are gifted differently. As I walk out, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the biggest room is the room for improvement. I know I may not have met your expectations, but I want to tell you that I did my best. Where there were choices, I made the best choices for the Institute. Where there were no choices, I made the best decision for the Institute. Let me say that leaders are not measured by what they do. Leaders are measured by what they are called to do. And I believe that I did what I was called to do within the space I was given by members. As I exit, ladies and gentlemen, let me wish CPA Rose Mora and our incoming council best wishes. My prayer is that you make real the promises you made during the campaigns. I also implore upon members to continue to support the new chairman in line with our professional traditions. Allow me to thank especially the CEO of ISPAC. It is not easy to be a CEO of ISPAC. It is not easy. In fact, sometimes I want to say, if I'm given an opportunity, I would still want to be chairman of ISPAC and never the CEO of ISPAC. Thank you, CPA Makori, for having provided leadership at our secretariat and support to the council. I will forever cherish the support given to me by the Secretariat team, the managers we have here, and the staff. Continue with the same zeal for the sake of our profession. Thank you once again, and may God bless you all. I want to request CPA Rose Maura to step forward. And I also want to request FCPA Rose Ogenga. Chairman Mumo, please escort FCPA Rose Ogenga. Let's go for this. FCPROs, FCPROs Ogenga is the only woman chairman in 40 years. I said the only woman chairman because Rose Mora is still not the chairman. <laughs> Maybe after the few seconds after this. So I'm going to be guided by the CEO. I don't know whether CPA Rose Ongenga would want to say something for one minute. Thank you, Chairman, for allowing me to say something. Um, fellow colleagues in the profession, today is a very special day for me. 16 years ago, I challenged the profession with one particular intention to change the outlook of the profession. Before then, 
the profession was known by a tall, dark, drunkard man. I needed to bring in another version, the woman in the profession. So I started then. In my council, I was the chairman, and I, everyone else was a man. That was trying. So I challenged the ladies to take their respective roles. Today, I feel so privileged to be here to receive another lady as the chairman of the institute. I came here today specifically to hand over my crown to my colleague, Rose Maura. Thank you. Thank you, CPA, FCPA, Rose Ongenga. And I've been requested that we move to the Mind Room by the Mindia team. We move to the Mindia so that they can take better photos. So I think I will just request the team to move forward. Wow. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for the patience that you've shown to be here today at this time. I know it's past three o'clock when really we should all have um, left here. And thank you for this um, room that is overflowing. I've never seen it overflowing such that people are actually sitting outside. It's just amazing today. To the uh, current um, chairman, FCPA, well, I, my immediate first, <laughs> my immediate first uh, uh, chairman, FCPA Julius Mwatu, um, to our esteemed um, past chairman who are here, um, FCP Rose Ogega, let me start with you for the very, very warm welcome. Um, FCP Itote, I don't know if you're still here with us. Um, FCP Lugalia, I can see you there. Um, FCP MG Wawero, I know you are somewhere in that corner. Hopefully you're still here. And, um, and all the other FCPs who are in the room that I'm aware of, FCP Ndwati, um, uh, Shogo Charity Moya, I think she has left, um, FCPA Koimburi, and, and all, anybody else that I've not recognized, um, good afternoon. To the, um, again, to the council members who are present, um, many of them sitting here with me, the current ones, and um, the past council members, um, to the ISPAC CEO and to the Secretariat, who have all been very, very supportive. Um, our invited guests, um, fellow members, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon again. Please turn to your neighbor and shake their hand and see whether they are still around. You're still there. Thank you, thank you. And tell them, lunch will be soon. 
Msichoke. I feel extremely humbled and privileged to stand in front of you here today to accept this great honor and that you have bestowed on me when you voted me as your 23rd um, chairman or chairperson just over one week ago. Over one week ago in the morning from 10 o'clock to about 11, I actually had a meeting at a client and I came out of that meeting at 11 and I was asking what are the results and for some reason I was not at ISPAC and the returning officer decided to give the logs and I wondered why is he giving the logs, why not just declare the results so that you calm some of us who are so nervous. But thank you so much. Um, I'm really pr privileged to be here today. And thank you to the Almighty, because this is, for me, it really is a blessing. It's not a journey that started today. And I thank you. And I thank you especially, especially to my family. My husband is here today, um, Willis. Thank you for sitting through this. And thank you so much for the support that you have um, given me over the years. As you've heard some of the contestants say, this has really taken us um, away from home. Sometimes you could be at home, but you're so busy um, making phone calls that even you're really not there. And he has really um, held the fort at home, supported um, our son, uh, when I'm not there, when I'm traveling, and I thank you so, so much. I love you, and I cherish you every day. Thank you. I'd like to be clear and confirm right now that I have accepted this call with the utmost sense of responsibility. Um, I do not take it um, lightly. I know that the Bible tells us that to those who much has been given, much will be required. Yes. And to those whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. And I do acknowledge that I have been very privileged in my life, all my life, and that I am ready to give back to um, this profession. And I pledge this in front of all you as I stand here today. I want to recognize um, the, the great men and women on whose shoulders I stand um, here. There are those men and women, and I think um, FCP Moya, if she was here, would tell us how in the early 70s, they started coming together as the African CPAs and trying to find um, training. I can also see my sister here. I had actually not seen there. Hello, Sophie. Thank you so much for being here with me. Um, and how eventually in... Um, 1978, um, the institute was honored and was, was actually formed um, by, through the support of um, our former president, uh, Moi Kibaki. And these are the men and women who have come here. They have given of themselves their time, their own resources, and a lot of them have not even asked for anything back, and they really are un unsung heroes, and that the reason why we stand here today, and the reason why our institute is here today at um, are 23,000 members um, strong. I do especially want to recognize um, the women. I want to recognize FCPA Rose Ogega. I want to recognize FCPA Charity Muya, FCPA Anno War, FCPA Kellen Karaoke, FCPA Rosemary Gituma, because if these women are trailblazers in our profession, if they hadn't come before us, if they hadn't run for elections, you would not think that it is now normal to have a woman as a chairperson or as a chairman of the institute. So I recognize them and I salute them for what they have done for our profession and for the doors that have, they have opened for those of us who are coming in now. And I also recognize that there are so many of you here, young men and women <laughs> CPAs, who will see me as an example of what they can achieve. And I tell you, please go for it with the... Um, with, with faith in the Almighty, belief in yourself, you will be able to achieve um, what you desire. Please go for it. Um, I want to um, recognize again our founding fathers. They put in this tradition of electing our members, electing our council members, and are electing our um, leaders. And the reason for this was to make sure that we do not end up with a situation where you have a Mugabe or a Museveni who does not want to leave power. So I can assure you that in two years' time, 
I will be handing over this mantle to somebody else to allow them to take our profession to the next um, uh, place in this journey. Um, so my investiture today is really historic as a second um, woman chairperson of um, this institute. My journey to where I am did not start today and has not been a straight line. It has really been punctuated by ups and by downs and by zigzags. But through it all, I've had my family to support me. They've been very, very encouraging. And I've had a lot of you friends who are sitting here today encouraging me, telling me, go for it. Even when people told me, how can you dare to run this race? There are those who told me, you can do it. And I thank you so much today for that belief in me. Um, I thank you for all those uh, members who supported my campaign. There are those ones who did it in the background. There are others who called and encouraged me to hang in there. There are those who took my call um, day and night, and I'm sure my husband wondered what was all these phone calls that were coming in, in, some of them as late as the middle of the night as you tried to figure out what do you do next, but I thank you um, so much. I especially want to thank the women at AWAC, FCPA, I'm giving you an FCPA before you get it, CPA Georgina Malombe, and your team of AWAC women. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I know that a lot of you did not sleep, in those four days during the campaign, you called day and night to make sure that everybody who should have voted actually voted. I want to thank a smaller team known as The Last Mile. They actually electrified the whole process. They helped me reach out to as many people as possible and make those phone calls. Thank you so much. I do want to um, thank um, my immediate predecessor, um, the 22nd chairman of the institute, FCPA Julius Mwatu. For a job well done, even in the very challenging circumstances, his tenure has witnessed um, exponential growth um, of members. I think he's told you his story. We've strengthened the devolution structures and uh, through the branch networks, and we've amended the Accountant, Accountants Act, among other notable achievements um, in the last two years. I do want to thank especially um, CPA Denise Osodo, the immediate um, past chair, um, and also um, CPA, who's also CS Obare. Again, thank you, our governance guru. Thank you for the support over those last five years. Um, I'd like to just pass my unreserved gratitude to um, FCPA Motu, um, to CPO Sodo and CPO Obare, and I pray that you will be available to all of us to consult you as we need, as we go ahead, um, uh, to do the best we can for our beloved um, institute. Thank you so much for your leadership. When I joined the institute about five years ago, I didn't realize that I would one day be standing here within a short period to be the, to be the chairperson or the chairman. I know a lot of men have sent me very many emails saying, you cannot be a chairman, you're not a man. Yes, <laughs> I, I agree. But again, it is the office that we're, we're looking at. And so you'll find me using those terms interchangeably, chairperson, chairman, chair lady. In fact, there's one I told you, just vote for me. I don't care what you call me. <laughs> but um, thank you so much. I want to um, thank um, CPA Denis Osodo again um, for being a worthy competitor for a very spirited campaign. You, it kept me um, awake, sleepless nights as I figured out how I was going to convince all these other members over you so that I could become the next um, chairman. And thank you. Thank you for your pledge that we will work together for the betterment of the profession. Please let us clap for him. I do want to thank and acknowledge and, um, the three members who have been elected to council. Um, FCPA George Mokua, CPA Dr. Elizabeth Kalunda, CPA Olik Rispa Awar, all your names, Asante. Let's clap for them, please. I, and I ask that um, we join hands and work together as a council because when members look at us, they don't look at us individually. They ask, what has the council done, isn't it? Nobody will come and say, what did FCPA Mokua do. They'll be asking, what did the council do during the tenure? Let us work together. Let us um, be one. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I want to encourage um, and to acknowledge those who are so courageous enough to actually stand and vie for positions. 
let us not be keyboard warriors. Let us actually stand and put our name there and say, I'm, I'm actually running for those elections. So thank you, CPA Sami Onyango. He might not be here today. I've not seen him. Um, CPA Muikamba Mgenyi, CPA Abdi Hafid Abdullahi Yaro, CPA um, Julius uh, Ruto. Um, I think he might have left. Um, CPA Evanson Nganga and CPA Collins Maobi um, Ongeri. Thank you so much for offering yourself. I recognize the passion that you have in serving, and I promise you that we will look at all the great ideas that you had and see what we can adopt um, for the Institute. And let us continue to engage in a civil manner. Let us have our elections be civil. I know that there was some level of mudslinging in this past um, campaign, but let us rise above that. Um, a lot of members have come to me and said, we want to see a clean campaign where you only run on the basis of the issues that you're presenting to the members. Let us do that. Um, when I think about what I want to achieve, I think about this institute of about, starting off with about 400 members in 1978, and 40 years down the road, we're at 23,000 members. The institute has grown um, tremendously. We are perhaps the largest professional, um, uh, professional members organization in Kenya today. Um, all the others um, are really uh, behind us in terms of numbers. And the institute has really evolved. It was founded by practitioners, but when we look at our members, it has really evolved. We have practitioners, we have uh, members in pub public sector, we have employed uh, members in private sector, and we have young people, we have women, we have older senior citizens and so forth. And we owe all of this. It's important that we make sure that all of them find a spot under the umbrella of ISPAC, isn't it? We cannot say that ISPAC is only for um, a number of members and not for all. I ran under the banner of, being, of creating a strong, trusted profession that benefits all, because what is important to us? It's important to us that our profession benefits us. It's important to us that we are recognized, that we are respected, and we are given the space to do the right thing. And this benefits us for either from a monetary perspective and, and that we are able to fully contribute to our communities. And therefore, my agenda, and a lot of you have seen this, was premised mainly on service delivery. That is very, very critical, and we will continue to focus on that. Please don't leave. I'm not going to go into the details and um, uh, into all this, but I just wanted to be able to mention that this is very, very critical. You want to be able to call the institute and somebody picks up and addresses your issues, isn't it? And this is things that, as I've, the last three months as I've talked to members, the feedback that I've received has been very, very critical in terms of these areas. So it's important that we focus on those. Um, issues around CPD, you've had the passion around issues around CPD. People are looking for affordable, um, innovative, um, easily accessible CPDs. And that is really going to be one of my very critical um, focus. Issues on institutional sustainability. We probably spent two hours here today talking about our financial statements and about the issues of institutional sustainability. And it's important then that we as a council focus on that, focus on cost optimization, focus on expanding our revenue basis, uh, making it um, wider such that we can continue to serve members and we can continue, we can even achieve that 20% target of retention of our surpluses, we can pay off our loan. It's very, very critical. So that's going to be a very um, critical area for me. Um, issues around um, regulation of the profession continues to be so, so, so important. Um, every single day when you open the newspaper, um, you're either finding, it's either there's a practitioner, you're being told you didn't do the right thing, um, there, was an, there was an audit failure, or you're being, finding that it's our members in public service that you're being told that uh, in the public sector that they are aiding and abetting corruption, isn't it? So this becomes a really critical um, area for us. And one of the key things you've, been, you've heard about it, the amendments to the Accountants Act. It's important for us that we operationalize this. We define, so in the coming months, um, you will see a lot of things coming out of the, um, this particular council, including providing guidelines to uh, redefine the professional practice category. Those multiple licenses that people have talked about, you'll see them coming. You'll see a 
we will be pursuing very vigorously the issue of fair remuneration. A lot of accountants have come to us and complained about fair remuneration, not just in the public sector, but also in the private sector. So it's very important that um, we focus on that. You will see us having a special focus on our members in the public sector, because in the fight against corruption, for some reason they have been made the focus on that fight. It has become that um, anybody who wants to try and fight corruption will start with the accountant without looking at the holistic picture. So it is my intention that we actually um, look at the holistic picture. Can an accountant really be corrupt on their own? Is that possible at all? So these are some of the things we'll be challenging with the government, with the government agencies, and re-looking at the PFM Act and making sure that we're actually protecting our accountants in the public sector and that we're not leaving them out there to hang dry. And every time somebody wants to prosecute some corruption, they first of all go to their accountant, they forget about the accounting officer who's the CEO, they forget about anybody else who is that whole um, cycle. So that's very, very critical um, for me. Of course, there's the issue of our um, professional services division. I've listened um, to, to um, our practitioners here, some of them complaining, but it's important as well that we continue to expand that service where we are supporting our practitioners um, through the regulations, um, through making sure we have more quality audits and through training and so forth, and I commit to that. Opportunities for members is very, very important because if we don't have opportunities, what are we sitting here to do? If we're not creating opportunities, what are we doing here? We know that our economy is expanding and it's growing, um, and as the economy grows, there'll be more opportunities for, for accountants, isn't it? Everybody requires an accountant, whether it's in employment or whether it's um, as, as a service provider. Of course, the conundrum we have in this country is that very, very many of our young people continue to be unemployed or underemployed. And we've been challenged as this pack, what can we do or what are we doing about this? We've put in place two programs, the, train, the training and practical experience framework and the internship. However, these programs have never really been entrenched within this pack. And it's my intention and my commitment that we will entrench this. And so I'll be coming to you who are sitting here. Majority of you who are sitting here are in positions of authority. Within your own firms, you can take two or three or four interns, isn't it? And you can train them, isn't it? So I'll be coming to you. I, I'm not hearing the responses because I'm, I'm coming. I'll be coming. Thank you. Uh, Erastus, thank you so much. Because I'll be coming to you and ask you, please take two or three members of, of um, our young people and train them. Because if we don't do that, who is going to do it for, for us? Are we expecting the lawyers will come and do it for us? Are we expecting the engineers will come and train our young people? We have to do it, isn't it? So we'll be coming to ask you, and do not say no. Do not say that, oh, no, I can't do it. Because you can. You have the capacity. You can take one person, two, three, four, five. And we'll also collaborate with um, the, the newly created National Employment Authority to see how we can create opportunities for our young people. Um, again, changes in technology. We're talking about artificial intelligence, blockchain, cybercrime, and um, analytics. Those changes are really creating emerging opportunities and they are greatly impacting how we as accountants do our work and how we continue to remain relevant and the fact that we must retool ourselves. So we cannot bury our heads in the sand and say that these technologies are not with us. So we must um, work, and I'm fully committed to work um, with at, at, um, uh, at ISPAC and also with CASNEB to relook at all our trainings how do we retool ourselves um, to make sure that we can respond to the next, um, to the opportunities for the next um, decade? Concerns about SMPs, we've had, I've listened to those concerns, and I had made a commitment because I was the chair of the Practitioners Development Committee that we would relook at these charges and make sure that um, they are um, that they're affordable and they're not really penalizing any SMPs. I think um, CPA uh, Palm of Palm and Associates. I'm listening to you, I've heard you, and uh, we will respond to those. In terms of women, today we're making history as being the first um, council that has a majority of women. Um, we have six members of council out of 11, and we'll also be chaired by a woman. So we're making history. This is a, a historic, 
or a history-making council, if I have to say that. And I want to work closely with um, our um, CPA Georgina to make sure that we continue to create opportunities um, for women accountants. Um, I look at devolution, we've talked about sustainability, all these branches that we've opened, I think um, eight branch offices in a span of two years, we must make them sustainable. They must be self-sustaining, isn't it? We're not opening this, we're opening them to serve members, but they must be self-sustaining. We cannot be opening them and then asking to continue putting a lot of resources in them. So I'll be working very closely with our branch leadership to make sure that we're offering services at the branch level with our branch leaders to make sure that they can independently actually engage at the branch, at the county levels with the governors to drive our agenda of accountability of, and, and advice to all the county governments that um, our members are. When we think about um, brand visibility, um, it's very, very important that um, We've continued to, I know a lot of members have raised questions, why do you have mutual recognition agreements? But it's important because as you've heard, we have our members in 41 countries. I personally um, have been one of those members. For many years I worked um, in the US where we did not have a, a, a mutual recognition agreement and I ended up having to take all the four papers again for the US CPA so that I could get a license as a US CPA. Can you imagine if there was an MRA, how many CPAs work in, um, in America? Very many. All you'd have done is to be able to easily convert your, C your Kenya CPA into an American one and life moves on. So let us not, um, let us uh, look at the diversity of our membership. It's not just we who sit here in Kenya. We have uh, members in Australia, we have our members in the UK, we have our members um, in South Africa and very many other countries. I'm just singling out the ones that have the largest um, memberships. And through this, together with representation in, um, at IFAC and at PAFA, we continue to really enhance our visibility. Um, through issues of stakeholder engagement, we continue to engage at the very highest level of government. We continue to be recognized, we will continue to be recognized as a force to reckon with in this country. There's one thing that is, I'm very passionate about. When we went to uh, parliament to push for the new amendments, there's one amendment that was actually thrown out on the floor of parliament. And that amendment is the one that says that anybody practicing accountancy in this country must be qualified and must be a member of the institute. And I'm committed to making sure that we get that amendment back into our act. Because that is what is going to protect us. When um, you cannot have any, any Tom, Dick and Harry, we want to be like South Africa, we want to be like the US, the UK, like Tanzania. Nobody can practice accounting in Tanzania if you're not a member of uh, the National Board of Auditing and Accountancy. Is that true? So we want to be like that. We don't want to have any Tom, Dick, and Harry coming from wherever to come and practice. We want to be able to protect. We can ask our learned friends, can anybody practice as a lawyer or even go to court if you're not a member of LSK? Even IHRM is making life very hard for um, any quarks trying to practice, isn't it? So why is it okay for us, for um, anybody, to call themselves an accountant when they have never even seen the classroom of a CPA class? So that is really one of my commitments. So I w it's my intention to really um, position our Institute for Influence to make it more visible and more relevant. And I want, to be, I want our voice and our position to be recognized in the national um, issues as, as we discuss. So as I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to thank you again to appreciate you for being here to come and witness um, this history-making um, day. Thank you so much. Um, I trust and pray that um, my term will represent a point of inflection. At ISPAC, we build upon what our seniors have built on. Is that true? We don't sometimes expect that there will be such sharp divergences in what we're doing because we have had our seniors who've come before us, but we want to be able to continue building on what they have, and I believe that with um, God's help and hard work, we will get there. Um, I want to thank and acknowledge my family, as I said that before, especially my husband, for the support that he has given me and continues to give me um, up to um, today. 
Um, I want to thank my um, employer, Deloitte, and especially my former um, CEOs, FCPA Sami Onyango and um, FCPA Daniel Ndonye. They might not be here. They're now retired, who have encouraged me very much um, along this journey. I do want to thank my current um, CEO and my fellow partners for giving me the latitude to actually be part of this journey. Otherwise, I would not be here. I do want to express my gratitude to the, C to the CEO, um, CPA Edwin McCurry and his team for the tireless work that they do to serve all of us. And even when we don't appreciate it, they continue to do their job. Let us give them a clap to appreciate what they do for us. And finally, I really want to thank and pray to the Almighty that God will bless each one of you, your families, and your communities, and will grant you journey masses as you go back to your destinations. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'm honored to be here to make history. I'm honored, um, and I promise you I'll do my best. God bless you, God bless ISPAC, and God bless our beloved country. Long live ISPAC. Thank you so much. Can I confirm that as men, CPA, accountants, we are not scared? <laughs> At least in the branches, we have a position called gender rep, which has been occupied by the ladies if things get tough. <laughs> That's the importance of putting structures, sustainable structures at the end of time. <laughs> 